Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back. Starters Order 7. This is episode 10 of our first uh, first go-round with this game. And uh, I am liking it. Uh, you know, I did hear uh, somebody mentioned yesterday that the Start It mod had been updated. Uh, I think, well, I think it was updated, but they said it, they had gotten rid of the, they had done some optimization to it and had gotten rid of the lag. Um, uh, it was Gray Mantle. Gray Mantle, thank you for the comment. Uh, the Start It mod is fixed. No more lag for the USA. It even loads in about one minute. Uh, so here's, here's something for, for you guys to help me out. So I was, I was catching up on Chris Ormy's channel yesterday and, um, I was about four episodes behind. So I knocked him out while I was recording some other stuff yesterday. Um, but, uh, one of the things that they do or he does, and I've heard other people talk about is retiring. Let me see if I can find an example here is retire from the game or to the game pool and once you do this then it allows you to import the horse at the beginning of the game and the reason that's coming to mind right now is Chris made a comment in yesterday's video, the one he put up yesterday, which would be uh, June 6th, D-Day, by the way, uh, 76th anniversary of D-Day. Um, but uh, he said that it get, he always gets to a point uh, where the game starts to lag and slow down, and he ends up having to do a restart. So it sounds like... And I haven't looked at any of his past seasons. I've only been watching his current season, which because that's when I started playing the game. Um, but he made a comment that, you know, I guess it sounds like he retires a lot of, like, his core horses that he's built up through breeding and whatnot. And then when he does restart, he can basically bring all those same exact horses back into the new game and basically pick up from square one. I've got a dog hair or something hanging off the corner of my face and it's at least well maybe it was one of my hairs i don't know but it was bothering me sorry uh <laughs> it was annoying um so i'm 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 just kind of got that now in the back of my head that that may be something that we have to deal with and my thinking was i was told that basically every time you restart the game the game randomizes all the horses so we'll have miss aura in a in the neck in the next game that we start but she may not be this miss aura she may be worse she may be much better uh it's hard to tell but that they're randomized so just because you have a good horse you could play the game you could restart the game 10 times and it you know may not you know may not be the same exact horse ever um, so my thinking was, well, that's good. You know, you just randomize. But I was thinking you could play five or 10 years or, you know, 20 years or whatever and, and not run into an issue. But, of course, we know the game's a little buggy. And uh, so when Chris made that comment yesterday, I was like, ah, I need to start thinking about that. Um, because, you know, we may not have our breeding up to where we want it. And, you know, by the time the game starts to freak out now, you know, Hopefully we're, that's still a ways off because uh, I think he's on episode 43 or something like that. So I'm on episode 10. So I got a little ways, but still something for me to start thinking about. And I don't know how to do it. So if you know the steps on how to retire a horse to the wherever it goes into the ether to where you can import it when you start a new game, let me know in detail how to do that in the comments or or if you don't want to type it all out if you know of a video where they actually show it put the link to the video in the comment because that'll help everybody i mean it, you know if i've got the question i'm sure somebody else has got the question too that's the way i approach my games that if i've got the question 
somebody else is likely asked the same question. I mean, you know, we all play the game. We all run into the same issues, right? So anyway, either let, let me know in the comments, but, you know, detail it. You know, okay, open the horse window, click on this, and then exit the game. And, you know, but walk me through it or point me in the direction of a video that shows me how to do that. Or a post over at the forums or whatever. You know, if, you, if there's anything that you're aware of that may show how to do that, you know, just put the link to it in your comment and uh, appreciate that. So, all right, well, let's get to it. Uh, we have uh, set some races. Uh, Miss Aura could not find a race for her. Uh, so that is disappointing. I guess I need to pay a little more attention to the racing schedule because it seems like about this time of year in game that we start just not having a large assortment of races. There's a lot of selling races and what have you. Uh, let's see, we've got breeder sales coming up in a couple of days. Oh, look, and it's June 6th in the game. So uh, that's cool. Uh, so that was yesterday. Today's June 7th in real life. Uh, but we have uh, all of our other horses set to run. Uh, I've looked at all of their uh, constitutions. I've looked at all their... Uh, uh, you know, and then I've gone out about two more weeks for all of them. So, uh, yeah. So let's see if we can do anything here. Uh, we are what one day from our next race on June 7th. So we'll skip to that day. We'll save it again. If you hit the S key on your keyboard from this screen, it will do a quick save for you. Uh, just because I don't know if we're going to get that race course crash. I don't know if it was due to a specific race course or the game. I have no idea. All right, Malio is entered into the next to last race. It's a class four maiden on turf. Still looking for her maiden. And we've got a fourth, an eighth, and a seventh place. And I can certainly understand Chris saying, you know, Chris Orme saying, I don't watch Maidens when he's got, you know, 40 horses running. I've only got a handful. So, you know, if we keep any of these th two-year-olds as three-year-olds next year, um, you know, then we may start seeing some issue where too, too many horses. Um, and, you know, we may not watch Maidens at that point. At, at some point, I could see that happening. Uh, by the way, so Miss Aura's four. Um, what age do you quit racing horses? Let me know in the comments. Uh, just curious, you know, is there, a, is there a max age that you, you retire horses? Does it matter if they're mares or, or, uh, colts or fillies, um, or stallions or, or mares? Uh, you know, just curious, but, uh, anyway, couldn't get Miss Aura a race today, but we do have a full slate for everybody else. All of the three-year-olds and the four two-year-olds. And, of course, we've got breeding going on. We've got everybody in full. We've got 20, what is that, 29 yearlings coming through. And uh, our one little stud, Van Doesberg. Uh, <laughs> speaking of, does he have a... All right, he has not sired anything yet. Uh, he This will be his first year. We, we do have a couple of our broodmares with him. Uh, in with him. Uh, let's see, in full two, Van Doesberg. So we've got two two Van Doesberg uh, offspring coming this year. It'll be interesting to check those out. So uh, let's get to the racing, which is what you're probably here for. So Malio goes first. I am just beside myself. that she is uh, struggling as much as she is, and she's a long shot. Nobody's picking her. Looking well, lean and ready to go. Uh, let's see, it's a dirt course. Left-handed, flat. All right. Don't see anything particular in there. Well, let's go race and see if Malio can finally break her maiden. It's on turf. That may have something to do with it. I don't know. 
Brakes slow on the inside. I think she's going to get pinched up against the rail there. Yep, and she's already moved. She's tried to move over here, but got pinched out by that number two horse, Wigmore Hall. Oh, well, we may not have any running space to do anything here. And we may not have any ability to do anything anyway. The two furlong pole we are running last. Dead last. By two lengths. One furlong pole. We are not anywhere in the picture. We're coming up. We've passed Vino Veritas. And it is Struth running away with it. All right, we made up a little ground. We got up into, what, fifth position? But uh, that was crap. That was crap. Settled towards the rear, outpaced. I'm not sure. I believe the horse will get another furlong. All right, so that is something to think about. All right, we're not going after either of those. So let's go. All right, so we ran. So we ran a five. But he thinks she needs to be going at a six. All right, so we'll need to make a note of that. All right, so I just made a note about that on my little spreadsheet. I got a thing about games where I have to keep a spreadsheet for stuff. It's it's not a game. It's a it's a job at that point. So I don't I don't know how I feel about that, but uh, it is what it is. All right, uh, let's see. Now we do have breeder sales on the thirteenth, but we do have a couple of races before then. So let's get to that. Uh, oh, hold on. That's July 10th. My bad. And when is that uh, breeder sales? That's on the 13th. Okay, so we are going to have two horses today. We'll save that up. We'll go out to the tracks. I forgot to look and see who was favored. All right, well, Cashmere Brown's not favored. All right, the tipsters like Mar Marifac. 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 Cashmere Way Brown is parading lazily. Everybody else looks good. That doesn't bode well. Oh, and you can save from that screen once again. I knew there was a second screen somewhere. All right, this one's on dirt. We're on the outside here. Six furlongs. Broke well out to a quick lead. And then draws back into the pack. Settles in. It looks like settled in well. It's hard to tell. But we go right to the rear. Plenty of running lanes on the outside. All right. Two furlong pull, and we are dead last. We're neck and neck with Mary's Way, though. Show some heart there, Cashmere Brown. Don't finish last. <laughs> One furlong. We are way off, but we are charging. Do we have anything? Do we have anything? And I'm going to say the answer is no. We charged up. We got on the flanks, but we finished next to last. That was brutal. Never competitive. Never in it. Uh, I think that horse is a bust, man. I think we're done with that horse. All right, and Putin. Looking well. Everybody in the field is looking good. Oh, man. Starting from the same place. Oh, and he broke badly. That was a very poor break. He gets up into the race. He moves up into second, into the first turn. Gets over on the rail. All right, he's in a solid position at the two furlong pole. Four abreast. He's running with the three chasers. 
All right, he's in. He is going to be the one left out in the cold at the furlong pole. Fourth drops to fifth. Can he hold off my freedom? Nothing there. Can he edge back in front? And he cannot. <clears throat> oh, boy. You know, the worst thing about doing this for a video series is the fact that I have to live with this for so long between episodes. <laughs> I mean, if I was just playing this, I could be, you know, I could play out three years today and Putin would be way in my rearview mirror and uh, faded. All right, he dwelt. I don't know what that is, but soon recovered and prominent midfield and then faded out. Yeah. Ridden in pack. You didn't let me know a whole hell of a lot there, did you? I'm going to say that was some worthless information. What is the... Uh, is that the number of days since the last race? Is that what that is? It's got to be because he just ran and it's one. Malio just ran. All right. 60 days for Benru Adventure because she didn't have a race a last time out. All right. Um, all right. Let's knock out some breeding. I think I'm only going to go after one horse possibly. She's got a third place finish in a grade two. Gulf of Akaba, two grade one wins. Wow. You got a pretty dominant little three-year-old there. Balmore Cloud, seven group one wins. That's intriguing. Got one group one win. Finished 15th in the Derby. A lot of nothing, a lot of nothing. But that that most recent horse here, that's... Now, is that because of him or because of the dam? <clears throat> Catch the Rascal. Wow. Three, two, six group wins, three group one wins. Grade one, group one. I don't know. And it ran a selling race first? Holy crap. Catch the rascal. So basically, if we could find somebody out of Catch the Rascal, that would be a horse to go after. Um... And this horse has a group two win. It's been a while. July 28th of quite a few years ago. Yeah. I tell you what, I'm going to go after Digamist Girl just on the off chance that there's something from her dad. Uh... Because that last horse that he put out was something fierce, man. All right, so let's go after both of those. It's not a very expensive horse. Yeah, I don't want that other one, though. We're just going to go after those, those two. We're going to work the bids. All right, we got that one. And the next one is going to be the Nubian Gym. All right, here we go. All right, we'll have to be all over this one. This is going to get pretty high. This could get to be a $3 million horse. No, 2.4. All right, and then we'll skip the rest, and we'll back out of that. June 29th is going to be a yearling sale, so that'll be after all these races. So let's take a look at our breeding barn. 
and sort them by rating. So Nubian Jim, let's take a look at her. Ooh. Oh my God, a 90 potential horse. Whew. Low constitution, so it won't run a lot. We'd have to breed it with a horse with high confidence. Solid extra speed. All right. Let's uh let's check his confidence. Now, he has no confidence. We want to stay away from that. Boy, her potential is incredible though, right? Damn. That might be the best. That might be our top horse right there. I'm going to I'm going to spend some money here, boys. I am going to go I'm going to go big. I'm going to go with the 1.6 million dollar cabinet minister. All right, and Digamist girl. What's she look like? She's got almost a 90 potential as well, so that was a good call on her, I think. Solid crew, very good cruising burst. Extra speed's a little low, but I think let's breed her with somebody really good too, or possibly really good. We'll go there and 12 wins out of 12 races. That's a $5 million stud fee. I, mm, I don't think I've got the money for that right now. That might be a little wishful thinking. How about this one? It's a million dollars. Four grade one, one grade two in five, out of five. Let's do that one. I mean, it's, you know, hopefully they're decent. Hopefully they're decent. And let's go ahead and pop out of here. And let's get to the next race. So two horses running today. Third half and Benru Adventure. Third half is not the favorite. And Benru Adventure is not the favorite either. I shouldn't be surprised by that. Let's go ahead and save it. Get into the race. All right, well, she's second. She's carrying uh, equal to top weight with Nawiet, and they both have the same rating at 79. All right, Nawiet is getting all the love from the betters and the bookies. Parading well for now yet. We're moving well, lean and ready to go. So this could be a good race. This could be a good race. Hopefully she's got something for it. It is a class four handicap, and she's right near the top uh, of that zero to 85. Starting on the outside, six furlong race. Breaks a little slow. It is Sherman on the rail that gets out early. Nawiet is the number one horse in the white silks. Actually, that's the Chris Ormy silks, is it not? Chris Ormy's in this race. Uh, I have no chance. I have no chance. By the way, that looks like a customized silk. How do you get that into the game? How do you choose that for yourself? Because that looks like the Dallas Cowboys. All right, we're running up on the outside. Looks like Nawiet is coming with and coming fast. We fade just a touch, and she is going to charge past us at the one furlong. Do we have anything? We move into second, but we are fading fast. Nawiet is pulling away. We are strong into second position. Not, all right, well, I mean, it. you know. Three and three-quarter lengths back. Settled early, mid-division, nothing extra. Okay. We do pick up $1,400 in prize money. So that's good. Ridden as a closer. The horse enjoyed the ground. Oh, well. And third half. 
O oh, third half, what hath thou wrought? 40 to 1. Ooh. The betters don't like you. The tipsters don't like you. You're parading well, though. Yes, you're parading well. We're not expecting much here. Nobody's expecting much from you. I'd like to get something out of you here. Breaks last. And we are dead last. Unfortunately, on the rail, that's going to pinch us and give us no room to run. You know, maybe as they thin out a little bit. All right, coming up in here, two and a half furlongs. We're into fourth. We're going to have to slide out all the way to the outside here, though, at two furlongs, if we even have anything. Coming up is Emily Hall, passes us up. And we get cut there. All right, now we look like we're trying to make a charge. One furlong, but I don't think there's anywhere to run at. There is nothing going on. Can we sneak up into third at the wire? Maybe we did. And we did. 40 to 1 in third place. That's not horrible. That says $896, so we only lose a few hundred bucks for entering the race. Rinda's a stalker. All right, that doesn't help me a lot. Boy, boy. All right. So when is that yearling sale? On the 29th. We do have another race there with Dominant. Oh, dominant. 66 days since his last race. Uh, we have put a nose band on him for this race. We did that at the end of last episode. Uh, so, you know, we're going to try some pacifiers. The, the, uh, the head lad has not said anything about a pacifier. But, you know, he is excitable, which we know is bad to stay away from. But, you know, what are you going to do? Um, I want, I, I, you know, I kind of wanted another horse to run so you guys would have something to watch and he, he looks so good though. I mean, he looks so good. If you guys have any suggestions for him, let me know. And yeah, any suggestions on any of these horses, chime in, just let me know, you know, what you think we should do, what we should try. Cause I'm an open book here because I don't know much about this game. I'm still trying to figure it out, and, you know, we'll see. Oh, boy. All right, let's go race, Dominant, because you've been undominant. You've been dominated. Uh, do I want to put any money on this race? I think I might. Let's, uh, let's put... I'm going to put... Three bets for Max win. <laughs> Finished second. You bastard. You bastard. <laughs> Dominant. Third. In a maiden. Still looking for it. Coping well. First rock is sweating badly. All right, that could benefit us a little bit. We're at Ocean Port. We're on turf. We're on the outside. Six furlongs to go. Uh, looks like it was a decent start and then maybe stumbled. And then my jockey went right to the inside. And it looks like he got bumped really hard. Wow. All right. So we're on the outside. We do move out into the lead to the front and move back to the middle of the pack. Uh, I don't think this bodes well for him. All right, two furlong pull. We're running neck and neck. We nose out in front. We've got a length. It's number two, first rock that's running with us. He slides out to the outside. One furlong. We're starting to pull away. Oh, my God. Could we get a win? The nose band. It's the nose band. Dominant and his nose band cross the wire. And we have a maiden win for Dominant. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. 
$9,938. Sweet. Oh, that is brilliant. Lovely horse. Trip was ideal. Oh, boy. I was not. <laughs> I'm going to hit the save button because I wasn't expecting that. Hello. Hello. Oh, you know what? Um, yeah, he still has a little potential that we can grow. Here's another question for you. If you guys are getting this far in the video, kudos and thank you very much. But here's another question. So we've got about 10% here, right? Because we're at about 60 and he's capped out at 70 right now. Now, we know, at least I think we know, I, you know, I think I know from what I've heard, if we can max this out, his potential can go up a little more as a three-year-old. So we could get into that 75 to 80 range, but we've got to max him out as a two-year-old. Is that right or is that not right? I don't know the answer for sure. Let me know in the comments. So that's that's interesting. All right, so he wins a six furlong. So I think that's the distance we want to go. Because remember, he's bred at a mile one. All right, let's see. Sales. So I do want to hit the yearling sales on the 29th. So I'll tell you what, let's go do the yearling sales. I'll do that off camera. And then we'll come back. We'll watch Amthal. And uh, then we'll figure out where we're going to go from there. All right, so we have uh, just signed up, what's that, seven more horses. So let's take a quick look at them. Sagiator. Well, probably not. I mean, you know, he's got really good bars across the board. Nothing in the 75 range. So I don't know if that's going to be a good one or not. Uh, might be a good breeding horse. Maybe run her a little bit and then retire her. To, uh, to the barn. Woodland's Gin Power, uh, one-year-old Colt. Uh, these are all, uh, let's see, normal disposition, likes a fast track, bred for a mile. Solid constitution. Cruising burst is okay. Extra speed. Again, this kind of looks like what we've got right now, doesn't it? Uh, so I'm going to say that's probably going to be a no. Lady Padivore. Very good constitution, very, very good extra speed rating. So that might be one to put in our barn as a speed horse. And I think what I'm going to have to do is on my spreadsheet, I'm going to have to break out my breeding mares and put what their strengths are. And uh, then, uh, you know, that way I can figure out, you know, maybe what we're, what we're dealing with. Uh, Baltic Dip, another filly. Uh, that's going to be nothing. We'll probably just sell her. Very good confidence. Extra speed's right up there at 70, but I don't think there's enough there to breed with. Logan's Legend. Got some potential. 70, 70 potential. Extra speed is way up there. Enthusiasm finished. That might be a horse to look at a little bit. Audacious. Another one-year-old colt, large build, normal, and there's there's nothing there. And Jo de Vivre. Okay, I mean there's there's a little bit there, you know, for breeding purposes maybe, but I don't think there's anything there for us. So these may be. Can you put them into the barn to start breeding at two? Is it better to race them a little bit as they're as two-year-olds and then put them into the barn at the end of their two-year-old year and then start breeding them as three-year-olds? What do you think? Let me know so I don't get it wrong because, you know, I, I, one or two of those horses we might be able to run with and then a couple of the fillies might make some decent breeding partners but if we don't have you know do you have to have, i don't think you have to have a rating in order to breed them but you know 
is it better to have a rating there there's another question for you you guys will find i'm an endless list of questions <laughs> endless just completely endless all right next race is on the 10th uh do we have a sale between now and then we do not so that's good so let's get to it and this will be the last race for the episode we're already running a little long and this will be mr amthal and he is not the favorite uh yeah he's a long shot at best he's carrying the most weight he's got the highest rating and yet we're fifth <laughs> fifth selection well we do have some horses with wins you know he hasn't had a win uh in in a long ass time in a long ass time i think that's the technical term long ass time he's a lat horse starting on the outside seven furlongs breaks well in with the pack on the lead all right he's able to get over to the middle of the track a little bit running second behind harim a dancer we've got a group of three compton rainbow whoa and who is that coming up that's guglione two and a half furlongs we've drifted all the way over to the rail and now we're having to swing back out looking for space is what we're doing there but that's letting always bold come up on our outside looks like we're going to try to force our way between these two horses at the one furlong pole and that looks like a waste of time and i'm thinking we're looking at a last place finish for amthal yeah that did not go did not go well i'm wondering if some of this might be a jockey issue <laughs> I'm going to blame it on the jockey. Settled early. All right, so he did settle. Outpaced and lost place. Better horses. All right, well, I think he is done. I think he is done. Is he worth putting in the barn? He's got confidence. He's got decent extra speed. I mean, he's got some solid bards. If we could pair him up with maybe one of the that new mayor that had really that 90 potential, maybe we'd have something there. Maybe. Oh, she's a filly. Duh. Guess you can't do that. You could, technically. Don't know that it would work. But I think she's done, man. I, I don't think we've got anything else there. A last place finish all right well let me know what you think of today's races i got a lot of questions in this episode so i'm going to be looking for a lot of feedback from you and uh yeah so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna wait for this episode to go up so we may have a little gap between episodes um, it won't be a long gap. It just depends on you guys because I'm going to be looking for some feedback here. So typically I'm putting these episodes up every other day, three days a week. Um, I believe this one is slated to go up next Friday. So I'm recording this on Sunday morning. So this might go up on the 12th of July. So Actually, I wouldn't be. I would be recording more over the weekend, next weekend. So make sure you get some responses to my questions in here, uh, because you know then I can incorporate some of those. Because I think we're at a point now um, that we just you know we need to cull a few of these horses, and you know I've got some questions on a bunch of them. I don't know. I don't know. And like I said, I you know, I don't know a whole lot about this game anyway. Uh, I was glad to see Dominant get a win. Benru Adventure, three second place finishes in a row in the money. Not a lot of money, but, um, you know, that is what it is. So have we found the magic elixir for Dominant with the nose band? That would be, that would be good news. But how much more do we run these, uh, these two-year-olds? 
again, I think we want to try to cap out that potential so it can maybe take a jump next year. Now, see, she's maxed out. You know what? I'm going to make an executive decision here. I think she's maxed. I think we're going to go ahead and send her out to grass for the rest of the season. Now, we can always bring her back. So if you guys don't like that decision, let me know. Uh, Putin, he needs he needs about 15% more there. Benru needed a little bit. Uh, dominant. Dominant needs a little bit more. And then the three-year-olds, we race all year long. That's your big racing year, I know. So anyway, but I think we've got a couple of those. We need, you know, Amthal, do we do we weed her out? Do we keep her in the barn? Do we just, you know, do we sell her for, for a little bit of money? Um, don't know. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to move ahead a little bit into the game just to prep it for the next setup. Uh, because we do have a situation where we did not have a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, races available. So, you know, maybe I'm going to get to the end of July and let a lot of these guys build up. Um, now, she may not. Let's see. She didn't get a race. Miss Aura, class one, grade three, six furlongs. Class two handicap, grade two, uh, class one allowance. I don't think that's what I'm looking for. A lot of selling races. And we've got a class two. It's got seven horses in it. So what I've been doing is is uh, one of the things I've been, I, you know, I usually look at the field size. I try to find one with, you know, like four or five. Um but see, like this one's only got three. But we have a 110 rated horse. And she is a, she's a 105. I mean, she wouldn't be horrible. Coming off an eighth place. You know what? Let's, let's enter her here. Class two handicap. All fillies. She's in really good form. Amused is coming off an eighth place finish. Why not? Why not? July 30th. I'm at 45 minutes. We can't watch the race. That'll be the first race next episode, but I'm starting my booking now. Let me know those comment question, uh, answers to all my questions in the comments. Hit the like, subscribe. You guys know what to do. Appreciate you. Talk to you. Bye.